Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our Eucharist this morning on this All Saints Day. It seems with the Prime Minister's announcement yesterday that this is likely to be our last Sunday when we can gather for public worship for a period of time. And so we pray for all those who will be affected by this forthcoming period of further lockdown. We're not quite sure yet what the implications are for Remembrance Sunday in particular and for uh, the opportunity to spend time uh, saying private prayers in church, but uh, when I've had a conversation with the church wardens and when the governments and church regulations have been published, we will of course let you know and attempt to uh, allow uh, a limited amount of activity to take place within those rules. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you are the Holy One of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Lamb who receives blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honour, power and might. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the joy of all the saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. And there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, 
These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their wounds and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the book of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know them. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, called out of darkness into his marvellous light. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, 
because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The broadcast and print news media over these past few weeks have been dominated by two main stories. I'm sure neither of them has passed you by. The forthcoming presidential election in the USA and the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Not least, of course, the further period of national lockdown announced yesterday. But I wonder if any of you caught, any of you noticed two other stories that caught my eye during these past few weeks. Firstly, that there is an ongoing dispute between Italy and France about border rights on Mont Blanc. Who knew it? And secondly, that Nepal and China are preparing together to reveal the new height of Mount Everest. You wouldn't think that it would change, would you? Apparently the Chinese have historically measured the rock height and Nepal the snow height. So there's a difference of three and a half metres or so. Mountains matter. Their sheer size, their majesty awes us and inspires us. There's something about mountains that attracts us. Mountains are ever-changing as we view them. Sunrise and sunset bathe them in different lights and colours. Their appearance changes with the seasons. Their atmosphere changes with storm and wind. No small wonder, then, that in the Bible, mountains are places of so-called theophany. That is, places where God is revealed. Think of Moses encountering God on Mount Sinai and receiving the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Think of Elijah on Mount Carmel. Think of the mountain of the Transfiguration, where Jesus' identity as God is revealed to the disciples. Perhaps the majesty of mountains draws us to the ineffable majesty of God. The God who creates, who blesses, who draws to himself those who seek him. At the beginning of today's Gospel, we read that when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and sat down. Matthew is deliberately using language which will make his mainly Jewish Christian community associate what Jesus is doing with those previous revelations of God. He is, in effect, suggesting that Jesus is now engaging in a new divine revelation as he begins teaching the Beatitudes to his disciples. And the Beatitudes, of course, reveal to us the very character of God. Jesus tells us that the poor in spirit, the gentle, those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, are the makarioi. They are the ones who are blessed, who are filled with bliss, who are the most fortunate. The word is used in ancient Greek literature to refer to the pantheon of gods who experience happiness and contentment in an existence that is beyond all the cares and the labours and the worries of ordinary people. The Beatitudes reveal the character of God and his care for his beloved people, 
as well as in his intent for his faithful. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And of course, we see the Beatitudes lived out supremely in the life of Jesus himself, the one who, above all others, poured out his love for those who mourn, for those who are meek, for the merciful, for those who hunger and thirst for God's kingdom of righteousness. But today, on this All Saints Day, we rejoice in that multitude of men and women who have also encountered God and have sought to live their lives shaped by these Beatitudes. Our first reading from Revelation speaks of a countless number, impossible to count, who endlessly sing God's praises. And today's epistle reminds us that we are God's children now, if we have embraced the beatific, God-like way of living. All Saints Day reminds us that we are in a single communion with those who have gone before us, those who have gone where we hope to go. Today's great festival is a great day of encouragement. God doesn't judge us for our weaknesses, but rather on our persevering in our willingness to live as his children. As we enter this new period of lockdown, with all the restrictions and difficulties that it will inevitably carry. So we must resolve to shape our lives by these Beatitudes. For it is only through acts of mutual care, mercy and self-giving towards one another, particularly towards those who will feel particularly isolated, that we will grow in our relationship both with one another and with God. And to each of us who embrace that blessedness, Jesus promises us that ours is the kingdom of heaven. stand as we profess the faith of the saints, the faith of the Church. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the company of all the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, let us offer our prayers to God, the source of life and holiness. A giving church and 
the serving church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You have called us to a world of good things. We thank you for the beauty of this season of autumn. For all those who have set out to improve our world. May we remember that we too are stewards of all that you give us. We pray for all who work in conservation, for those who care for others, and those who live simply in order that others may simply live. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Bless Father, all peacemakers. We pray for the work of the United Nations, for all who seek to avert justice and integrity, for all those who work for fair trade and relief organisations. Today we bring you the people of France suffering from the terrorist attacks, the people in Turkey and the Greek Islands living through the earthquake and its devastation to so many lives. And today we place our country into your hands at this difficult time. Help us to remember that you are with us always and in control of all that happens. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for all who taught us the faith, for all those who have led us in the ways of goodness and truth, and who have inspired us. We pray that our homes and our work may be places of holiness. May others whom we meet glimpse a little of your love through our words and our actions. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. We bring to you, Father, all your saints who have been persecuted or suffering for their faith. All whose faith is being tested at this time. We pray for all in sickness, naming in our hearts those we know in need of your care and protection, and for all those approaching death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give you thanks for all who have triumphed in your name, all who have been undefeated and undiminished and now share in the communion of saints in your kingdom. Lord, make us to be numbered with your saints in that glory which is everlasting. Merciful Father, send these prayers to the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, through Christ our Lord who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
thankful to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honour of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints can be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks, most gracious God, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and glorified in the assembly of your saints. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. We, your holy church, acclaim you in communion with angels and archangels and with all who serve you on earth and worship you now in heaven. We raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Coming in glory, 
we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. with confidence to the Father, in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. 
Let us pray. God, the source of all holiness, and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. You stand and pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May God kindle the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. Amen. May he give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. Amen. Amen. May he strengthen you to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Following God's saints in the ways of holiness and truth, go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God.